Hi guys, past the morning, filling up my list, reading, finding an investment that 90%, 99% of viewers probably could not invest due to brokerage limits, limits, which is something very important and a topic that we will discuss in depth because buying something that requires effort, which means nobody else can buy it, is probably similarly as buying something that nobody wants to buy. So, very interesting topic. I'll uh, update you later. I have to write a report, see whether I can buy things there, whether it pays to go deeper into the research, but I'll still do the research. Uh, just a comment on my bike. Uh, John Templeton used to do after work, uh, after lunch, uh, walks of one, two, three hours to think, to settle his thoughts. I do bike rides two, three, four times a week, especially if there is nice weather. And it really helps me to structure all the research. If you look again at my list, it's so much data. I have read probably today, I have went, I went through about 300 investor relationship presentation slides from various companies, which means, okay, there is a lot to systematize, to boil down, and this is just day two of the paper research. So we'll see when, where it ends up. By the way, renewable energy is spinning, energy is produced, so all is well. See you later with future updates. So I continued with the research going through my list. One of, very, of the very interesting stocks I found is Meyer Melnhoff, an Austrian producer. And this is what happens when you have a good company. Good company, stable company, not doing crazy things, even doesn't have even debt now. And they can simply grow. They have a 30% payout. So they grow their dividends, they grow their earnings. And that's it. So stable company, stable family ownership, not doing stupid things. And consequently, the stock price does the same. So what, this is a triple over 20 years, dividend yield 3%. So that's 6% plus three, that's 9%. So if you want good returns, you can chase these kind of companies and you will probably get your eight, nine, 10% per year over 10, 20 years which is a great investment. However, good priced, well priced, okay priced, price earnings ratio of 14. However, I have looked at other companies and Finnish companies, paper companies that are integrated. This is the difference between many US companies, Canadian companies, especially as those don't own the land, own land, own hectares, produce pulp, produce their prime material. So they have high margins as they don't depend that much on pulp prices and inputs. Further, they're also investing, replicating their technology in Uruguay, which is something that maybe is in competition with the Brazilian investments that I have been looking. But the Finnish companies, a few of them, I'll show you later on the list, look good. Again, net debt to EBITDA zero, so no crazy things. They take debt deleverage quickly, grow from that. So looks interesting. And even the current cash flow yield is 9%. So if they can continue growing like that, we are already at double digits returns. Then just something funny from the research, West Bond, another paper company or something from Canada that simply gets you on your list. But if you go to their investors info, it says how it was featured in the buy low, sell high, small cap Canadian stock review in October 2002. I don't know what happened since then, but not much good. Just fun on what you can still find online. A look at the magazine pulp and paper shows a lot of positivity in the sector, takeovers, new production, uh, acquisitions, expand the expanding output. So that means, okay, it is a cyclical sector, not many companies have modes. I'm looking for those and that's why I will be looking deeper into the Finnish, Brazilian, Uruguay place and not many have modes. Thus, it is practically certain that there will be significant ups and downs. And going back to the list, so 
a look a little bit deeper into those stocks also portuguese stocks look interesting as they have finished their investment cycle so some very very interesting things and as i have let's say finished my research on the sector now it's time to dig deeper into a few stocks clubbing definitely the finnish producers perhaps the portuguese uh, the nine dragon from china definitely and then see okay what is the stock that i might want to follow over the next decade because as it is cyclical it's very important to buy when it's really really cheap and i'm not in a rush if the trend is there if it is positive i might buy something in 2023 and still make a lot of money on a low risk high reward cyclical stock so that's the process that's what i constantly do i'm looking for stocks to add to my watch list and if it's already cheap like it sometimes happens i buy immediately so we still have a lot to do today still have a lot of time uh, did already a lot of reading but next what you can expect i don't know if i will be able to do it but you can expect some stock research reports on these different companies from finland portugal brazil that are definitely cheaper than the american counterparts which means okay if you look elsewhere in the world you will find cheaper better investments Thank you for listening and watching. See you tomorrow probably with a stock analysis of some interesting global stocks.